Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Reacting Short, and if it's your first time here, welcome. Now, last time on Loki, it was it was a, it was a crazy episode. It was an action-packed episode. The biggest thing that we did see at the end of that episode in the in the end credit scene, after Ravona pruned Loki and that battle they had um, in front of the not the timekeepers. Um, I thought Loki was dead, but obviously he wasn't because he reappeared again in I don't know the um, variant graveyard with other versions of himself and we had other forms of him we had classic Loki we had kid Loki we had crocodile slash alligator Loki boastful Loki um, another variant another version of Loki so this is gonna be interesting to see what happened of course um, prior to all of that um, they were able to find both Loki and Sylvie by using the power of love and friendship literally they created a nexus event um, so the gang at the TVA could pick them up. So Mobius went on to interrogate Loki, even using um, forms of time loop interrogation with Sif, to, you know, to punish him, uh, Lady Sif. However, Loki was able to tell Mobius, look, it's all a lie, you're all variants, the TVA is lying to you. So um, Mobius went to do his own sort of investigation. He was trying to figure out what happened to C20, uh, the Minuteman they brought back. But Ravona mentioned, oh, she's dead now. We had to get rid of her. She came back crazy, talking nonsense. Clearly, it's all part of a big uh, cover-up, as we found out later when Mobius took uh, Ravona's uh, temp pad thing. Um, and he looked at the investigation. He saw that uh, C20 was in her perfectly right mind telling them that she had a life, she had a life on the sacred timeline and they took it from her and for some strange reason that's thing, those are things they don't want to, they don't want people to find out, especially people that are working at the TVA. Unfortunately when Verona found out she went on to grab Mobius as he was on his way to get Loki to try and get Sylvie and try and work things out but unfortunately he got pruned which because of what how loki came back i really hope mobius turns up because that was so shit i mean it's not the end of mobius and i really hope so that we do see him again so b15 after sylvie had enchanted her um went to get some answers and clearly helped them in that last battle um in front of the timekeepers and like i mentioned they're not timekeepers we found out they were animatronics Android, so they weren't even real so clearly at that point the one thing that the TVA were afraid of which was like I said the Nexus event the power of friendship and love between Sylvie and Loki um, they created a bond they were worried that is capable of bringing down the TVA so just as Loki wanted to talk to Sylvia about this and try and explore it to say that look we something could happen and we need to figure out how it happened that's when he got pruned, which brings us full circle to everything that had happened. Um, so I'm really excited. I want to see what Loki gets up to with all the other Lokis now he's met. Um, I wonder what it means in terms of um, when he landed there, he said, is this hell? Am I dead? And they said, if you don't come with us, you will be. So I wonder how long they've been there. So I'm really excited to find out what happens next. So here we are on to episode five, Journey into Mystery. Look at these poor variants just going about their lives. Oh yeah. What on earth is this place? What's that? Was that the Avengers Tower? It's where like we don't want like broken things, useless things go to. The variant graveyard. What is this place? Where are they? Who are you? This is the boy, that's Elias. Come on! Oh my god! Give me a tough battle. Who's really behind the TVA? I'm as in the dark as you are. <laughs> what if I said Loki wasn't dead? Not yet, anyway. I'd say you were lying. Maybe. Or maybe you are the same thing. How is he still alive? So we moved it to a place on the timeline where it won't continue growing. Basically, the branch timeline isn't. Why would we? Ooh. The sister's kingdom. Right. 
got it right. Ah, of course it's there. Is that a? <laughs> Whose candy cane throne is this? Probably Kid Loki. I feel like Ren Slayer is still up to no good. Oh. Miss Phillips, where are the files on this time crap? Still looking, hurry. Any second now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, of course, she was getting back up. I knew I would have not trusted her. You come out with your hands up and I'll put you in a time loop. Something not so bad. You can live out your days and a good memory. She's gonna prune herself. Yeah. To go where Loki is. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> the alligator is strong. You better run, Sylvie. Alive. Oh. Huh? What was that? <laughs> President Loki? Loki. Ow. <laughs> That's funny. That whole thing got pruned? Shit. Real. And why do you think that changes anything? That changes 
And that's exactly all the Lokis are trying to do. Is it a bit of rather? Ah, oh, I knew he was gonna do <laughs> Oh look at his face Again I don't know if this is the going down the romantic route or if it's just like friends because they're such awkward people but either way I'm loving it. Oh yeah, all well, the Lokis are gonna stick together. Hey. Classic Loki. Damn. Well, I hope Richard E. Grant doesn't get eaten. Uh, that was episode ooh, that was episode five journey into mystery uh that was a really good episode we got to meet all the other variants all the other lokis we also got to pick up from uh, ravona a ren slayer um i forgot to mention that she was also the woman who bought sylvie in when she was younger um and like i said the audacity she couldn't even remember she couldn't even remember what her nexus event was to bring Sylvie in at that time. So um, she was saying that what if they're not dead and she mentioned that the void was this place um, where all the timelines kind of s collide and they stop growing there. That's where they all go. Um, so while she was trying to distract Sylvie to for backup about something uh, that's when the Minutemen had turned up, but Sylvie, like I mentioned in the reaction, she pruned herself because she, she was like, wherever Loki had gone, I will be able to go. So we had, going back to the Void, uh, we found the other Lokis, so we got the Boastful Loki, Kid Loki, Alligator Loki, and Classic Loki, essentially future Loki, as to what had happened to him beyond Thanos, if he had survived. Um... And uh, we had found out that the kid was the, um, Kid Loki was the the ruler of all the Lokis because he was the one who killed Thor. Therefore, his Nexus event was that. 
Uh, we got a chance to find out all the other next events, which was quite nice. And we got to see President Loki, which I thought I was rooting for poor alligator Loki not to get hurt. But I'm glad he bit President Loki's hand off. So, um, when Sylvie turned up in the void, we found Mobius again, which I'm so happy about. Um, and then she was able to relay her plan to her. I've got to mention, back at the TVA, even Ravona wants to know, like, the timekeepers were fake. That's why she was keeping uh, B-15 captured. So now we need to figure out who's in charge of the timekeepers. There are a couple of things I've seen online, like about Kang the Conqueror and things like that. So I'm, sh I'm wondering um, if he's going to come into play um, in this. When they were, like, Sylvia's quick thinking about taming Elias, the thing, the beast that was eating everything up. Um, in... The void you know she said i'll be able to enchant it because she made a connection with it for momentarily she saw something so and she was correct her theory came true she was correct she was able to see what was technically guarding what Elith was guarding she enchanted it and she saw where it led to her which was hopefully where they're going to find who's in charge of all of this and like i said verona wants to know she feels like she's been betrayed so it's actually quite interesting to see who or what it is that's been doing all of this. Uh, a couple of quick things. I loved how we showcased, we saw Elias, how he was literally eating everything. Hands up for classic Loki. In the end, when, when Sylvie and Loki were trying to enchant it and classic Loki had jump in. And again, I felt really emotional there when he was um, doing the, uh, I forgot what they're called, not enchantments, but he was creating those illusions. Um, so he could distract Elias long enough for them to enchant the cloud, Elias. Um, and it's funny because out of all the stories of all the other Lokis, you know, he actually, he got to a point in his life before the TVA showed up that he missed everyone, he missed his brother, and he was going to go back after he isolated himself. So he was going to go back and see what was going to happen. So that was his glorious purpose. His purpose after everything was to be there to protect himself his two other selves for them to find out what all of this was on about so that was an epic exit and i really hope we get to see kid loki and alligator loki again there was a thing i saw at the beginning when we were zooming into the void it looked like the avengers tower i'm not sure what it was it had something else on the side of it though so that was interesting um so yeah now it feels like there's a race mind the pun Race against time to get, like, Sylvia and Loki are well on their way um, to find out who is in charge of all this, who has been pulling the strings. Um, I liked that Loki and Sylvie were somewhat, like, that again when Loki hugged Mobius was so sweet because we're forgetting this is 2012 Loki. He had not, he had not learned how to be compassionate. He had not learned any of that. So... It was a good, um, I forgot which Loki mentioned it, but it was a good, um, I wouldn't say comparison, but the fact that what is so wrong with the Loki is like they're always destined to be outcasted. So the fact that Loki, the classic Loki was brought in by the TVA. Um, so yeah, no, I really liked that episode. We saw Sylvie and Loki's relationship develop. Again, I'm not sure if it's going down a romantic level. I personally thought it was more of a, um, a kinship, like I found somebody, like Loki actually, Sylvie cared for Loki so much that she risked, you know, getting herself pruned to go find him. So she even said, I don't have anyone. She doesn't know how to do this. She doesn't know how to appreciate friends, family, anything like that. So again, if Marvel is going down the route of having a romantic interest between the two, I'm all for it, but at the same time, what the way I interpreted it is that again, Loki, both they were outcasted. Obviously, Sylvie was taken when she was really young, but Loki, growing up, was outcasted. He was the um, uh, he always he was literally always in the shadow of his brother Thor. So, the fact that he found somebody else who could truly care about next to Mobius, but another person, and it has to be it's another variant of himself. I think it's such. I think it's a really good character development for him, and, you know, really and truly, you know, they they both have a, a, a same goal, a same purpose, so, yes, so yeah, I'm excited to see where 
both Sylvia and Loki end up. If we're going to finally see who's been in charge of all of this, in charge of the TVA, we're going to hopefully get some answers. I can't wait for Mobius to go back and, like he said, burn the TVA to the ground and whoop some ass because uh, that bitch, Renslayer, Ravona, whatever, needs, you know, her, her time is coming and I hope Mobius gives it to her. But yeah. That was it. Thank you so much. As always, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts of this episode. Don't forget to follow me over on my socials, which are also linked down below. And I'll see you guys next time.